Thank you, Mr. Stevens. June 14th marks a turning point in my life. I was back in jail on my way to prison after out only 37 days. I hated myself. That day I wasn't sure if I wanted to keep living. But I don't want to jump in too far ahead of the story. Although you might guess it has a good ending or I wouldn't be standing here today. Good morning, everybody. My name is Jesus Garcia. I grew up in Arizona with a caring mother and father, four sisters. Our, ours was a fun-loving family that worked hard, played hard. By the age of 10, I was joining the rest of the family in drinking and smoking pot. As a teen, I got involved in gangs because I was like, it was like being in a bigger and more powerful family. I was actually, I actually felt safer being a part of a gang back then. Before long, I was drinking, smoking, pot, gave way to stronger drugs. For the, for the 25 years before 2018, methamphetamine was my drug of choice. My drug use led to all sorts of criminal involvement. I ended up going to prison in Arizona and later in Delaware and Ohio too. To be honest, I spent most of my adult life in prison or another. I was released in 2018 but I didn't have a place to stay and I didn't have any re-entry plan. I was able to use my prison network to hook up with guys. They gave me a place to stay. They offered me money and a job in Ohio, but not the kind of jobs you listed on your resume. It fell apart pretty quickly. And just after 37 days, I was, re I was released on June 14, 2018. I was in jail awaiting trial on federal charges. The judge was unhappy when I appeared before him. He was upset with me for my actions and upset about the lack of re-entry planning and preparation. No one can change the past, but now I have the opportunity to choose what happens next. Once I decided to live, I chose to fight my addiction and work to become the more, to work to become more than my past. I went to federal prison in Connecticut and participated in federal uh, Residential Drug Abuse Program, RDAP. RDAP was an extensive program that takes 500 hours to complete. It helped me change a lot of my thought process, deal with my skeletons in my closet, and open up new positive thoughts started to drive out of my darkness inside of me. Then I came to Alvis, to Allen Creek building, right over there. That's where the staff Chase and Antoinette in particular were a huge help. They were sincere, and if I was willing to change, they were there to support me. They cared in a way I had never experienced before. I was helped me get a job at the SK Food Factory, and I'm still working there. I started in production, then I worked on the lines, then packaging, and then in maintenance. Now I'm learning to drive a forklift. The very best part of what's happening today is that I now have the opportunity to help others. Antoinette connected me to Del Robinson. To Del Robinson. He's the executive director of Halt Pilots, a nonprofit whose mission is to help at-risk teens and young adults to become, to become productive citizens and leaders of tomorrow. I am training to be intervention, to do intervention work and to re prevent future violence. I hope to be able to prevent kids from starting over, staying on the same painful path that I'm ready to travel. My life is richer now than I ever thought possible. In relatively the time I've been home, I found a small group of friends who are positive. I have benefited from a second chance provided by people who look past, who look we look beyond my past and we're able to see my potential. So I want to thank Alvis and Chase and Antoinette specifically for being in the for being for believing in me and supporting me in my new life. I also want to thank all of you here today for supporting this new facility that will provide second chance to others for years to come. Thank you. <laughs> 